This is Dr. Zuckerman, and I'm going to give you a little presentation on the treatment of cluster headaches. Now, as a reminder, cluster headaches tend to occur in younger men, and they are usually unilateral, a lot of times in the retroorbital area, and are associated with autonomic nervous system involvement on that side, so that might be tearing, a nasal discharge, swelling around the eye, redness of the eye, sweating of the forehead, any one of those. And a lot of times, interestingly enough, it tends to occur at about the same time every day. And unfortunately for the sufferers, that might be at two o'clock in the morning every day. And it's so named cluster because um, if they're episodic clusters, an individual might suffer a cluster headache every day for several weeks to months, and they may go several months to even years in between attacks without having any of the cluster headaches. Now, clusters can also occur as a sort of chronic ailment, and somebody can have ongoing cluster headaches for a year or so unless they're treated and broken. So this presentation is going to be based upon an American Academy of Neurology position paper. Here is the reference for anybody who wants to look it up. And this study looked for double-blinded, randomized com controlled trials and evaluated the strength of those studies and made recommendations regarding the treatment of cluster headaches based on these proven uh, regimens. Now, the treatment can be categorized as either an acute symptomatic treatment, i.e. something to give the patient immediately when the cluster headache comes on. Now, a lot of times they don't last very long, it can be from either 15 minutes up to a couple of hours, but usually they don't last that long, and so the acute therapy has to have a very rapid onset. So based on the quality of studies and the results, we have level A medications to get rid of or abort a cluster headache, and that those include a subcutaneous form of sumatriptan, which is a six milligram dose, that's called Imitrex, of course, or an intranasal or nasal spray form of zolmitriptan, a different triptan, Zomig, which comes in both five and 10 milligram sizes, both of which have been shown to be effective. Or um, you can administer 100% oxygen in either six liters a minute or 12 liters a minute and administer that for about 15 minutes and that has also been proven to show a good deal of effectiveness to get rid of the acute cluster attack. Now level B treatments include actually the same medications but a nasal spray form of the sumatriptan or an oral form of the zolmatriptan, uh, whereas level C studies have shown other compounds might be effective, certainly not as effective based on the study information as level A or B, but may be more attractive to some patients. For example, intranasal cocaine, 10%, can... Uh, get rid of an attack, probably an attack of anything, or intranasal lidocaine, or a compound called an octreotide. So those are the effective ways to get rid of a cluster headache. How do you try and prevent them from happening? So uh, reducing their frequency, well, these are the so-called preventative medications for cluster headaches, and evidence is not as strong. 
as it is for the aborted types. So there is no, there are no level A medications. Level B, we have an intranasal form of um, a capsaicin containing product or the administration of steroid injections into the suboccipital area. Now, the level C medications are actually more recognizable, such as verapamil and lithium. And there's also evidence, level C strength, of melatonin. Now, the uh, recommended medication for prevention of clusters is, in fact, verapamil, though um, that's based a lot more on uh, clinical experience than it is on uh, the study results. And of course, the absence of proof doesn't prove the absence of effectiveness or whatever that phrase is supposed to be. In other words, there simply may not be studies to prove that it's beneficial, but um, they are. Now, take a second and look at those doses for verapamil, 360 milligrams. That's a very high dose, and you can't start the patient out on that medication level immediately. So um, it takes a while to build up to that level. Now, we used to use a serotonin antagonist methasergide, but um, that's not advisable these days for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's not available in this country. Number two, there are no studies proving its effectiveness. Number three, its side effect profile includes retroperitoneal and pulmonary fibrosis, so it requires discontinuation of the medication after five months, and you have to give a month of a so-called uh, medication vacation so as to uh, reduce the likelihood of that happening. So we don't use it anymore, in addition to the fact that if you do use this medicine, it's contraindicated to use either a triptan or a dihydrogotamine containing compound. So we don't use it anymore, but I had to mention it. Now, there are other medications that are used in this so-called transitional phase. In other words, patients who um, are starting on a preventative medication but haven't yet achieved the therapeutic dose yet. And so these regimens or medications are used to hopefully get rid of the cluster headaches immediately in a way to bridge the gap between the abortive medications and the chronic preventative medications. So these are called transitional therapy. And a very popular regimen is to use oral steroids starting out at 60 milligrams a day for three days and then reducing the dose by 10 milligrams every three days. So that would give a total of 18 days of prednisone. Other medications in this so-called transitional category would include a dihydroergotamine injection or an ergotamine containing oral medication. Um, and since none of these medications have been subjected to randomized controlled trials, we don't really know how long these other medications should be given. And again, the suboccipital steroid injections probably should be considered as part of this category. So what do you do if there is a person who has chronic cluster headaches and they've not yet um, responded to any of these different uh, regimens? Well, in that case, it would be reasonable to combine medications such as both the verapamil and the lithium 
to hopefully provide some relief.